I'm just here to make cooking shows. Stay with me if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> That's the truth though. That'll be sharp. All right, so we're just gonna make dinner today and we're making dinner with what we have in our cupboards and fridge. And today I have bacon. I also have broccoli and I have some eggs and a chunk of cheese. This is some parm. So I'm going to make basically like a broccoli carbonara type thing. Zero authenticity just making making it the way I want. Um, traditionally, whatever, um, carbonara is made using uh, guanciale or pancetta, which is like, guanciale is like the pig cheek. Um, pancetta is just like the belly, but it's cured uh, instead of smoked like bacon. Long story short, I don't really care. I kind of just want a smoked porky product. This is still good, so we're good. So there's two of us having dinner tonight and I think I kind of want to go a little heavy on the bacon. So I'm gonna pick six slices. This is like, honestly, it's kind of on its way out. I should probably just cook the whole thing and then just remove some. Okay, so I'm gonna cook a lot of bacon just so I can get it cooked and then I'll put some aside for tomorrow's breakfast or something. Before I start cooking the bacon though, I'm gonna think about pasta. Like with any time you're cooking pasta, there's a big decision-making process as to what shape to make. Usually depends on what shape you have on hand. I have some spaghetti, but it's only, it's only enough for one kind of like tiny portion, so that's out. Um, I have these wagon wheels, which I'm pretty fond of. I just watched a YouTube video today where the guy was like, wagon wheels suck. And uh, I disagreed with him in the comment section. So if you like wagon wheels, let me know. Um, today I think we're gonna do rotini because that's just what I feel like. So um, use whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you how to make dinner. Actually, that's exactly what I'm here to do. I'm not here to tell you what shape of noodle to use. Just use what you like. So I've got some rolling boiling water in the background here. I'm gonna dump a bunch of salt in it. Like quite a bit of salt. And pasta is one of those things I do tend to measure because otherwise I go a little crazy and eat way too much. So I'm gonna weigh this. There's two of us, like I said, we're both pretty hungry, so I'm gonna weigh 100 grams each. One second. The reason I say that this is a little bit hefty is because I think that like technically one portion of pasta is 100 grams cooked and I'm making it 100 grams raw, so it's gonna be more cooked. Um, that's just what's happening. So two hundy. Give or take, give or take a couple twirls there. Oh my God. Oh, there's noodles everywhere. So I've got a large pan here. I'm gonna put a bit of olive oil into the pan. Even though bacon has a lot of fat in it, I still want olive oil. I just do, so. So chopping the bacon. I'm not being super fussy about how small I'm chopping it. I kind of like larger pieces. I like a bit of a toothsome bite to my bacon. This is a lot of bacon. <laughs> a lot of people uh, think you need to cook bacon on a really high heat for some reason. I actually prefer to cook it kind of low and slow and really give the fat a chance to render out. While the bacon is cooking 
and kind of rendering down. I will turn it up a tiny bit. I'm going to take a crack at this broccoli. So this is one of those times when I actually kind of like it when the broccoli gets a little overcooked or actually, if I'm being honest, a lot overcooked. Um, I think we've all became very obsessed with like tender, crisp broccoli and green stuff, you know, oh, it just has to be just steamed to keep all the nutrients and like, yeah, totally. Nutrients die uh, when you overcook <laughs> your vegetables, but also like it's kind of good sometimes to have really, really kind of low and slow cooked green vegetables. I think if you drink a green drink and, you know, eat a salad, you can afford to have some overcooked broccoli in your life once in a while. That's just my opinion. So today we're actually going to overcook it. We're going to cook it in with the bacon until it gets quite like soft and actually really kind of melty. I'm, I'm going for a melty broccoli here. Now is the time to take out some of the bacon that I accounted for earlier. So this will be great for my breakfast. So I'm taking out about this much bacon <laughs> and I'm leaving about this much bacon behind. I'm going to say it's about four slices, which is kind of nice for two people. I'm going to drain some of the fat into here as well. Okay. So now that the bacon is kind of semi semi cooked, it's not crispy by any means. I'm going to put the broccoli in. And now's the time when you kind of just want to chill the beans, not worry about overcooking the broccoli. It'll be fine. You kind of want to overcook the broccoli and you'll get some, the bottom of the pan will be really brown and bitty and sticky. So you can just throw a little bit of water in to kind of deglaze it. Ready for this? I love that. I already mentioned that we weren't going super traditional with this, but part of that is going to be, I just kind of feel like adding a bit of garlic. So that's definitely non-traditional for carbonara, but I'm just going to smash a clove and just chuck it in like that. Maybe take this sprouty bit out because I don't really like this sprouty bits. I can't wait for summer garlic, you guys. I'm just going to chuck it in like that and it'll soften up nicely and it'll kind of just melt away. I'm going to drain the pasta now. This is starting to get pretty close. You can see the broccoli is still bright green, but it's definitely well cooked. Like it's not, it's not crunchy. And if it gets a little bit paler green, I'm also totally into that. I kind of like that in this. Okay. Noodles. Noodle time. In my usual style, I uh, drained the pasta into over a measuring cup. So I just put the measuring cup into the um, sink and I just drain the pasta over top. It overflows and whatever. But the, the important thing is that this cup will catch some of the pasta water, which is salty and starchy and it's going to be super critical for our sauce. I'm just going to put it on off to the side for now. So I'm just going to put the noodles right into this pan with everything else. Okay. So I'm turning it off for the moment just so that we can gather our thoughts. <laughs> so, um, this is a carbonara ish thing and a key part of carbonara is egg yolks. Sometimes whole eggs, sometimes egg yolks. I'm going to make a uh, egg thing in the morning and I think I can use some whites for that. So I'm just going to put the whites in a bowl. If I didn't feel that I was going to be able to use the whites for something, I would probably just throw them in as well. I kind of like to start the sauce in a separate bowl just to be sure that um, it's not going to scramble. So the egg white is going away for tomorrow morning. The egg yolk is going into this bowl. I just do the old back and forth technique. And then 
I have a little whisk. You can definitely just put the egg yolks directly into the sauce or into the pasta, but I kind of like to get the sauce started in a bowl first because it makes me confident that it won't scramble. So egg yolks whisking together and I'm adding some of this hot pasta water slowly. So this is kind of tempering it. Tempering just means gradually bringing something to a specific temperature. So this means warming them up so that they don't freak out when they hit the hot pasta. It's kind of noisy. You might have noticed I'm not measuring anything. Uh, okay, so then this is just going to go straight into the pasta. And the heat is off, so it shouldn't scramble. It should just kind of nicely start to cook gently because of the heat of the noodles and everything that's in there. And then I'm going to grate in some cheese. I've got parm. Uh, what kind of grating do I want? I think I want like a small grate, but not a microplane grate, just small box grater grate. I'm thinking of inventing something that involves grating. <laughs> That's it, that's all I'm gonna tell you. Stay tuned for the details if it ever happens. So start with a big handful of cheese. And already, I mean, there's not a lot of heat going on in here. It's just the heat, the residual heat from the pan and from the pasta and from the broccoli and the bacon. But it's already thickening up like a beautiful little carbonara-ish thing should. So if you feel like it's not saucy enough, you probably need to add a bit more pasta water. I think two yolks is perfect for two people worth of pasta. I'm just going to add a bit more of this pasta water. And it's amazing how creamy it gets. You don't need cream. You don't need milk. You don't need cream cheese or anything. Oops. Look at this. Look at this, you guys. If it's a little loose, you can just turn the heat back on for a sec. And then the last kind of major ingredient is black pepper. Quite a bit of black pepper. So I think the original, the name carbonara, there's a few kind of debates as to where it came from, but one of the theories is that it was the, the Roman coal miners that would come home after working in the coal mine and they would have coal soot all over them and they would go and eat their pasta and it would, all the soot would get into their, their pasta or something. So the black pepper is like emulating that. That's one of the things. Anyway, so a good, that was like, what, 20 cracks of black pepper? So I'm going to give this a little taste. It's very glossy. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. So let's get her into some bowls here. The bowls, the bowl is my usual preferred pasta eating vehicle um, because it means I can go to eat it in bed and it won't make a huge mess. <laughs> These are like pretty oversized bowls. I'm getting all the bits. Okay. So that's that. A few more bits of parm because obviously it's just the way to go and then i even though it's totally unnecessary i'm gonna go over it with a little drizzle of olive oil because i have really good olive oil right now and i really like it it's from portugal and it's very nice so i'm just gonna give this a little drizzle oh my god i'm so excited and we have wine 
and a couple more cracks of pepper and then we're done. So that's it. That's our broccoli carbonara. It's a perfect dinner that came together in like, I think 30 minutes or less. Um, and I have bacon cooked for tomorrow's breakfast and it's just great. So I hope you give it a go. Throw it in a big bowl, curl up with somebody you like and enjoy. Come for the entertainment, stay for dinner. We got you. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> well, this is only my first class, I swear. <laughs>